Dear students, let's solve this problem. There are four charges at the corners of a square Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4. Okay. They are all equal to 16 micro coulomb which is equal to 16 into 10 power minus 6 coulomb. Okay. We are going to calculate the total force acting on any one of the charges. Okay. So which means that the total force acting on Q2 due to Q1, Q3 and Q4. Okay, so let me just explain this vector diagram now. So the first step is to solve this problem is to draw the vector diagram like this. So let me explain the vector on this particular charge. Okay, so we are going to calculate the total force acting on Q2. It will be the same for all the charges because all the charges are equal and kept at the same distance. Okay, so let's concentrate on this one. This Q, uh, the force on Q2 due to 1 this q1 is acting in this direction because q1 is a positive charge and q2 is also a positive charge so it should be a repulsive force which should push this up this way okay and similarly if you see q3 this also pushes q2 away away from it okay so this uh, f2 that is the force on 2 due to 3 will be in this direction Okay, and there is another uh, possibility that is the force due to this charge, which is the uh, diagonal. Okay, so those the force on Q2 due to Q4 is acting along this direction. This will also should be in this direction because this is also positive and this is also positive. So it should push this away. So please try to understand the other uh, directions of the forces also. Okay, so we are going to calculate it numerically. So let's calculate F21 first. Okay, so what is the charge on Q2 due to charge Q1? So we know the formula from the Coulomb's law K Q1 Q2 divided by R squared. So here everywhere R is 0.2 only. So K value we know 9 into 10 power 9. And then uh, Q1 and Q2 both are equal, both are equal to 16 into 10 power minus 6. So we can square this and the distance is 0.2 square. Please do not forget to square this term, okay? And you will get some 57.6 Newton. Now we have to calculate the force on Q2 due to this Q3 charge that is this one okay so let's calculate that F23 which is equal to K Q2 Q3 divided by R squared once again Q2 and Q3 these two are separated by 0.2 meter only so R will be 0.2 here and the rest everything is the same so if you see these two they are actually same so you will get the same value that is 57.6 Newton now, the force F24 is a slightly different. The charges, the value of the charges are the same, but the diagonal distance is different. So, how will you calculate the diagonal uh, distance? It is, you can use the Pythagoras theorem, okay? So, it is side squared plus side squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, okay? We can use that also. So, that's what I have uh, drawn uh, here. So, 0.2 meter, 0.2 meter, we know the sides, okay? And we can calculate this distance, okay? It is square root of 0.2 squared plus 0.2 squared. So, I'm going to substitute that uh, here to calculate the F. 2, 4, 4, okay. So, K into Q2, Q4 divided by the diagonal distance whole square. So, when you substitute the values, you will get 28.8 Newtons. So, it is, it makes sense. You see this, this, when the distance is a little larger, this, uh, the force will be less because they are inversely proportional. The force will be less. Now, this point is very, very important here. Now what we have to do, what is the total force acting on charge Q2, okay? So now we have to add the three charges, that is F21, F23 and F24. If you see this, F21, F23, the resultant of these two acts along this di direction, okay? Where F24 is already acting along this direction. So how will you add these three vectors? 
So first find the resultant of these two vectors and then add it to the force F24. Okay, so let's do that. So how will you find the resultant of any two vectors? If you know the angle between these two vectors, then you can calculate by using this formula. Square root of F23 squared plus F21 squared plus 2F23 F21 cos 90 degree. Because F23 and F21, the angle between them is actually 90 degree. Okay, so you will get the resultant force as 81.5 Newton. Now, we can calculate the total force acting on Q2. So, we have calculated the uh, resultant of these two already. Okay, now we have to add it with F24. So, that's what I have done it here. So, the resultant of these two is 81.5 we calculated and then sub, um, we have calculated this already that is 28.8. We are going to add these two. So, this is the uh, total force acting on charge 2 that is 110.3 Newton. Okay, and uh, where it acts, the direction of the total force will be along this direction only along F24 or you can say along this diagonal also. Thank you so much.